Hi, it's Isabel and because we all can't really go on vacation this year, I thought it might be fun to recommend to you some books that are set in different countries so that we can at least all go and explore different places through reading. I have picked out quite a big stack of books. I think it's around 20-ish books and the way I pick them is that they all either have to do with travel or have a very strong sense of place and the setting kind of really influences the story or they just really transported me to the place they were set in when I read the books. Yeah, as I said, I think I have around 20 books set in different countries. I also have two that are, let's say, a little bit out there, <laughs> but we'll get to those in the end. The place I wanted to start with is one that I'm quite familiar with because I've been there on holiday a few times already and it is Italy. And the book I wanted to recommend is The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. If you don't know, this is a book about a guy named Tom Ripley and I think the story starts off when he meets this older guy and he kind of lies about where he went to college and the older man assumes that he knows his son and asks him to go to Italy where his son is currently on holiday and persuade him to come back. Tom Ripley doesn't know this son, but he pretends he does and agrees to do this. And so Tom Ripley travels to Italy to meet this um, guy and he doesn't try to persuade him to go back. Instead, they actually kind of become friends, but it gets darker and darker from there. And this is a very gripping novel and Patricia Highsmith is just great at creating remarkable interesting characters but she also I feel like portrayed the setting of Italy and more specifically I think it is Venice very well. It really reminded me of being on holiday in Italy. Moving on from Italy another very popular holiday destination in Europe is Greece and the book that I want to recommend set in Greece is Circe by Madeleine Miller. Circe, I guess most of you have probably heard of because it was very popular on booktube, but if you don't know, Circe is a Greek myth retelling and it follows the figure Circe who is a witch and she is banned and has to live on a remote island and the story follows her perspective and she is a figure who crops up in many different Greek myths. For example, she plays a big part in the Odyssey and you see her encounters with all of these other mythological figures in whose stories she has played a part, but this time from her perspective. And I thought this was a really interesting change of perspective. I think I've mentioned before that I do quite like the current trend of retelling Greek mythology from a female point of view and I think this is a very well done example of this. And honestly I can think of worse fates than having to spend the rest of your life living on a Greek island. The next place I recommend you visit through books is also in Europe and it's also a very popular one and it's England. And for England, I actually have two books. The first one is non-fiction and it is To the River by Olivia Lang. This one I decided to pick because it is actually about a journey that she made. She at one point decided to follow the River Ouse from its source all the way um, to where it reaches the sea. And this is basically her thoughts and observations that she made on that journey. I really enjoyed reading this because it's kind of a combination of memoir and nature writing but she also goes a bit into the history of the ooze and other people that have kind of to do with it and Olivia Lang is a great writer and it really shows in this book and if you want more of a calm uh, travel journal that also has a lot to do with literature and nature I think this one might be in an interesting one for you. Staying in England, I decided to also pick a classic and the one I went with is 
The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The reason I specifically picked this one is because I thought the setting in this one was very memorable. This one is set on the moors and the setting really plays a role in the story and is a big part of why this story is so atmospheric and it is definitely a place that I would love to visit in person someday. This book follows the case of Sir Charles Baskerville who is found dead and his nephew, I think it is his nephew, will inherit his house but there is kind of a curse going on. According to myth there is this great hound that is hunting down um, the Baskervilles. So Sherlock Holmes and Watson go to the moors to investigate what is really going on there. The next one I have also isn't set too far off because it is set in Scotland and it is Sal by Mick Kitson. In this one again the setting very much has an influence on the story because it is set in a national park where Sal and her sister escape to to escape the abuse that they experience at home. This book deals with some very hard topics but I would say is ultimately a very heartwarming novel and the reason why I particularly enjoyed it is because it has this um, surviving in the wilderness element to it and watching these two girls survive on their own in the national park was really interesting to see and I really I really liked reading about that. So if you wanted to take a camping trip and now can't this might give you similar vibes. And because I've already talked about England and Scotland I might as well talk about Ireland as well and the novel that I picked set in Ireland is The Good People by Hannah Kent and this is a historical novel set in 1825 in rural Ireland and this one follows a woman who becomes convinced that the grandson that she's looking after is actually a changeling child. This one is again very atmospheric and also rather dark. This book is more for people who want to escape the heat and go somewhere cold because I feel like I remember some scenes in here that did make me feel very cold because I think it is set more towards autumn and winter in Ireland. So if you've had enough of the heat try this one. Staying with rather cold places the next book is set in Poland and it is Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead by and I might get this wrong Olga Tokarczuk. Correct me if I'm wrong. This one is actually translated by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. So this one as I said, it's set in Poland, it's also set in a more rural area and it follows this older woman who lives in a remote village where people usually only stay for holidays but she and a few neighbours live there permanently and the story kicks off when one of those neighbours is found dead. So over the course of the novel you kind of try to figure out who did it but it's also more than the who done it it's also very fairy tale like because the protagonist has a very strong connection to nature and the animals that surround her and that is a big element i would say of the book and again it has great atmosphere and a really strong sense of setting and again like the good people and also the next book that i'm going to talk about it's one for people who love cold weather and really want to get some more cold weather in their reading now that we can't really have it outside. It's currently over 30 degrees outside and I'm... I can't handle it. So I need all of the cold weather books. Which is why you probably won't be surprised by my next pick because it is The Blue Fox by Sion. And this one is set in Iceland and it features a snow avalanche, um, very cold setting and I love it. I always have a hard time trying to describe this book but according to the blurb it follows a naturalist who takes in a woman with Down syndrome but at the same time it also follows a reverend who goes on a hunt for a blue fox and 
these stories kind of intertwine, there's some flashbacks and connections are revealed. But the reason why I really love this story and why I think it is perfect as a kind of travel book is because it starts off with very short vignette type chapters. It's not really chapters, but parts. And they're very immersive and they follow this hunter trying to hunt the blue fox. And he gets trapped in a snow avalanche. And him being surrounded by all that ice and snow is such a great atmosphere and really transported me to Iceland. Next up, we are still staying with the cold climate books. Uh, I have Erebus by Michael Palin. And this one I think is perfect because it actually follows a voyage or multiple voyages because it follows the whole story of the ship Erebus which first travelled to the Antarctic and then later to the Arctic where it was lost and then found rather recently. So this one is perfect if you want to read about sea voyages and Antarctic and Arctic expeditions. We're getting back to some warmer climates again. The next book I have is set in the US and it is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. And I mean, it has a place in the title. It's perfect, right? This book is, as the title suggests, set in Idaho. And I think the present day timeline follows a woman who lives on a farm in Idaho with her husband. But in this husband's past, there has been a very shocking event. The blurb doesn't tell you what happened, so I won't either because I don't want to spoil anybody. But I would say this book is less about what exactly happened anyway and more about the people involved and their reactions to it and how it influenced their lives later. Next up we have some more let's say, old-timey exploration with The Lost City of Said by David Gran. This is, again, non-fiction and David Gran researched the story of the British explorer Percy Fawcett who got lost in the Amazon rainforest in 1925. The reason he went into the Amazon rainforest is because he was looking for this lost city of said that people believed existed and was completely made out of gold. That's why they wanted to find it. And David Grant tried to figure out what actually happened to Fawcett. And again, I think this one is great because it actually features traveling and also because the rainforest is a very interesting place and it's described very vividly in here. For the next recommendation, we switch continents and go to Africa, more specifically to the River Nile. And the book I have is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. This might not be the most accurate representation of what a holiday on the Nile might look like. And it's also very old fashioned, but it's definitely a fun one. And Reading Agatha Christie always feels like a little holiday to me. And this book follows a group of characters who are on a ship on the Nile. And this one is an Hercule Poirot novel. And Poirot investigates the death of one of the passengers of this ship. The next book is also set in Africa, but has a very different vibe. And it is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkan Brathwaite. And she is a Nigerian writer and this book is also set in Nigeria. It follows two sisters, one of whom happens to be a serial killer. <laughs> I just love that premise. So the protagonist in this book is the sister who isn't killing anybody, but her sister always calls her whenever she has accidentally killed one of her boyfriends again. And the story kind of starts to escalate when the protagonist's sister gets interested in the same guy as the protagonist is actually interested in. But it takes some very unexpected twists and turns. And it is actually less a crime or thriller novel than it is an exploration of Nigerian society and especially 
attitudes towards women. It also goes kind of into uh, the sisters' past and explores their relationships towards each other and also the rest of their family. And it is a very fascinating portrait of two very unusual women. Moving on, we switch continents once again and we go to Australia. And the book I want to recommend is The Lost Man by Jane Harper. And The Lost Man has a very strong sense of setting. So this is a standalone crime novel and it kicks off when a man dies of thirst, kind of outside of any town. And the heat in this book is very oppressive and obviously a very important part of the plot because if it hadn't been as hot, this guy would have never died. It isn't necessarily one that I would read now that it's already very hot outside, but if you want a book to fit the weather, this would be perfect. Moving on to a book set in Tasmania, the book I would like to recommend to you is Flames by Robbie Arnold. And this one, like many previous ones, also has a very strong connection to nature and some of the animals um, that you can only find in Tasmania, actually. It also plays with uh, myth and folklore. I think at one point you have a talking, thinking animal that is also kind of a god in here. So this one definitely is heavily uh, leaning towards magical realism. Because if I remember correctly, this one is about a family where I think in the current daytime only the brother and sister are still alive. And the mother has at one point um, just gone up in flames. And the brother is now concerned that this might happen to the sister as well. So he builds her a coffin and she doesn't like that and tries to escape from him. And the story kind of goes on from there. But as I said, in this one, kind of the, the story of the humans is mixed in with what is going on in nature and the animals around them. And it all kind of influences each other. So the setting very much is important to the plot, which is something I always like. I am slowly but surely overheating. So moving on quickly, the next book I have is The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara. And this one follows a scientist who goes to Micronesia and on an island there, he finds an isolated tribe of people who seem to be able to live forever. And it is set across basically this scientist's whole life. It follows him on this initial expedition, but also when he then returns time and time again and about how the place, the island, is also changed by having been found and um, suddenly being of interest to people from other regions. And that is actually the part of the book that I enjoyed the most. It also follows the scientist's later life when he's accused of pedophilia, which I just wanted to mention so that you know that this is also part of this book. But the reason why I would recommend it in the context of books that allow you to travel is because you follow him on this um, expedition to explore new places. And I found that very interesting and also the questions that arise from it morally and ethically what you do when you actually find a tribe of people that previously had been completely on their own were very interesting to read about. Then I want to again mention a book that I've mentioned in a previous video, namely my Reading Rush blog, and it is The Man with the Compound Eyes by Wu Mingyi. And this one is set in Taiwan. And I won't say too much about it because I talked a lot about it in my Reading Rush vlog. It basically follows two different protagonists. Atelier Yi, who lives on this um, kind of remote island. And Alice, who lives on the coast of Taiwan. And... A trash vortex hits the coast of Taiwan and that's how these two characters kind of come together and meet. And parts of this book look at 
Taiwan, the culture there, the different people that live there um, together and kind of the the way they live together and the prejudices some have against others. It also looks at the aftermath of this trash vortex hitting Taiwan um, and how that has a potential to completely change the environment. I hope this made sense. The next book I have is also one that was very popular on booktube and it is set in Japan and it's Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Oh, and I forgot to mention that The Man with the Compound Eyes is translated from Chinese by Daryl Sterk. I try to usually mention translators. I'm very sorry if I forget, but I think they're important and they deserve a mention. And the reason why I was reminded is because Convenience Store Woman is also translated and it is translated from Japanese by Chini Table Tekmori. Convenience Store Woman follows a woman who works in a convenience store and people around her find it strange because it, she's already more than 30 and so her friends and family expect her to find a real job or at least find a husband, get married and have kids. And through this, this book really explores kind of Japanese culture and the expectations that are put on women. But it's also very funny because this protagonist really doesn't care about those expectations and she has some very strange reactions to what people expect her to do. So if you're looking for a book set in Japan, I think this is a great one to start with. The last book that is actually set in a country before we move on to the mysterious other two is Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. And this one is set on Mount Everest. This is again non-fiction and it follows John Krakauer who was on an Everest expedition in 1996 that went horribly wrong. And in this book he writes about the whole expedition from his point of view, obviously. Not everybody agreed with um, what he wrote, but this is his account of this expedition and what happened there. Because it's set on Mount Everest, it's again very cold, but it's also very, very immersive, I feel like, um, the way he writes about this expedition, because it's his actual experiences and he can really convey how he felt in these moments on Mount Everest and I found that very impressive and interesting to read about. Climbing Mount Everest is not something I would ever want to do but for some reason reading about it really fascinates me. Now as I promised the two books that are more out there <laughs> and the reason why I say out there is because they're not set on our planet. Surprise! <laughs> so the first one that I want to recommend is Moon Cup by Tom Gold and this is a very cute uh, graphic novel set on the moon and it follows this cop on the moon who is one of the last people still remaining on the moon and he just goes about doing his job and it is very very cute um, very heartwarming and set on the moon which you don't get as often as other places. And this also feels a bit like a vacation because it's just a very heartwarming, sweet story that will make you smile. And lastly, we have Set on Mars, The Martian by Andy Weir. <laughs> I couldn't resist putting this one in here. So this one is a sci-fi about a guy who accidentally gets left behind by his crew on Mars. And he has to kind of try and figure out how, how to survive until somebody can come and rescue him. So, obviously, the setting has a very strong influence on the plot. Uh, because it's basically his main problem. How do you survive on Mars? It's a very fun book. People are a bit divided on it um, because of the humour in this. I really liked it and I found it fun to go on this adventure with the protagonist. Whew! And that is it for my very long list of books that I would recommend to you to travel to different places. I know that I certainly enjoy kind of getting to know different places through books 
I hope you found some that sounded interesting to you and thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!